I spoke to South Korea's former foreign minister, Kang kyung wha who told me that to prevent conflict there, there needs to be meaningful engagement, not just show summits, like the one led by President Trump in Hanoi in 2019, which she called a debacle. Kang kyung wha is now the incoming head of the Asia Society in New York, and she joined me from Seoul. Foreign Minister Kang kyung hwa welcome back to our program. Thank you, Christian. It's wonderful to be back with you, although in a different capacity from my previous job. So I'm going to talk to you as foreign minister, frankly, for a moment, uh, because you're still in Seoul before you take up your position mm -hmm. in New York. Are you more and more worried, like mm -hmm. everybody appears to be, about your northern neighbor? Kim Jong-un, head of North Korea, has done a whole load of much more provocative things recently and has said that mm -hmm. one way or another, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. one way or another, there will be reunification, even if it's not peaceful. Do you think that he's on a path to war? Mm -hmm. Well, it certainly feels that way, but he always tempers that hawkish statement with moderation. So, for example, I think after he says all these uh, things filled with hostility, he says, unless somebody touches us first, we're not going to touch them. Um, the exercises are not designed to harm anybody, any countries around. So you see a bit of an attempt to control the level of the, the hostile rhetoric. It is still concerning, of course, uh, but this heightened rhetoric plus the, the testing of the missiles, this con is a continuation of a pattern that began after the debacle of the 2019 Hanoi summit between the United States and North Korea. After that, they immediately went back to launching the missiles, and that has picked up speed, more frequency in the recent years. And then, the, you know, the rhetorical hostility that goes it, with it is, of course, more recent. OK, I want to pick up on what yes. you just said about the Hanoi summit. I was there in 2019 when President Trump met with Kim Jong-un. Mm -hmm. And of course, it was all meant to be rosy before mm -hmm. they had met in your country, in South Korea, or at least up there at the border. Mm -hmm. And it was mm -hmm. all meant to be rosy. But you're saying mm -hmm. that actually what Trump did didn't amount to much. There was no ratcheting down of tensions. Well, I think, yeah, I think what came out of that summit, what, or what didn't come out of that summit is, you know, in hindsight, it's all a very missed opportunity, an opportunity that could have, uh, the life of that opportunity should have been kept, even if they didn't have an agreement there. I think that somehow a way to continue the discussion to keep North Korea engaged would have been extremely important. And frankly, we would not be in this situation. But I think, you know, the, the, the 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 failure i think is explain i explained it as what well. the president has tremendous desire intention to do something but there was very little backup at the working level mm -hmm. and and this is you know this is the this is the typical trump leadership on these issues will but very little follow up and and support from the working level so that's a huge lesson when we ever go back to a phase of engagement with north korea and, and potentially a huge lesson for how you would deal with the potential uh, mm -hmm. uh, eventuality of him returning as president. What do you think a second Trump presidency means for, you know, the Korean peninsula, but also for U.S.-Asian relations? Mm -hmm. Well, that is the big question in everybody's mind around the world uh, these days, I believe. And, and that is the big the most consequential event for not just the United States, but for the world, frankly. And so, yes, uh, we, we're all having, you know, you know, contingencies thinking in our minds. But I think, you know, as foreign minister and at first as Asia Society president, I would not comment on how the election is unfolding. Um, but, you know, we, we will we will deal with the, the, the results. We will respect the will of the American voters uh, the, as the result of the the elections. Yeah, yeah, that's all well and good. But you've basically just told me that there was no follow up. Uh, I can read you the list of things that have happened since that mm -hmm. North Korea, that summit with Trump. Several cruel missiles have been, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. your country has reported them being fired at you, uh, testing a new strategic solid fuel mm -hmm. intermediate range, uh, which could be nuclear armed mm -hmm. earlier this month, mm -hmm. you know, tons of artillery shells into waters near you. On yep. top of all that, 
it is now <laughs> becoming the principal or a principal armor of of uh, Russia and joining up with Iran to to yes. you know I, I so yes. was it all for show I think there is a you know cur- certain calculation on the part of the North Koreans and certainly uh, you know the the big players the close collaboration between Russia and uh, North Korea on the military front North Koreans uh, artillery shells and missiles going to the Ukraine battlefield is is a concern not just for for us here on the Korean Peninsula but also in Europe so and it's glad that Mr Sullivan expressed that concern to the Chinese in Bangkok to Mr Wang Yi very explicitly and requested call for China's intervention China's pressure on the North Koreans uh to do something about this what China does about it we'll have to see very carefully but it's a global concern so i think it's 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 right that the media has now returned its focus on on North Korea's behavior uh but we also need to calculate yes we have to respond with a very solid defense posture for sure so that we're prepared for any provocations but and we must do it with overwhelming force that so that it's the, the one round finishes the provocation and doesn't escalate into further rounds because if we get into that stage it becomes really really difficult and i don't think anybody at this time in the world would like to see another flashpoint getting out of control mm-hmm. and and there's a lot of potential for that here in the current peninsula so i think all cool heads must try to manage the situation to lower the tensions kim jong un has declared unification no longer possible mm-hmm. with the south his government has ordered the monument to reunification mm-hmm. in pyongyang mm-hmm. to be torn down uh, you've spoken about maybe you know you have to listen mm-hmm. to every word he says but nonetheless this is happening now i want to ask you mm-hmm. because you're talking about heightened tensions Trump has also said that if he returns he is going to slap a 60% tariff on all goods from China. Does threatening to slap a 60% trade tariff mm-hmm. on China hurt or hinder stability? Mm-hmm. I think definitely it works against stability because I when we were working on on the on the North Korea file and the geopolitics of the Northeast Asia the you know the the heightening tension on the trade issue between north between the united states and china on the one hand and then we were collaborating with the chinese on the north korea file on the other hand and you i could clearly feel that the chinese collaboration on the north korea file was weakening as the tension with the united states on the trade side and other issue was increasing so the united states was trying to do two things that was pulling them in different directions so i i think this idea of a across the board tariff in you know, a huge trade uh punishment uh if it ever comes about you know i would i would be very concerned if that was really to materialize mm-hmm. um for me so you are as we said about to take up your position as the new president and ceo of the asia society that'll be in new york and that's happening uh, early mm-hmm. april what mm-hmm. inspired you to take on this new position mm-hmm. what do you hope to be able to accomplish you know out of office not wanting to interfere in others mm-hmm. you know policy as you just said but what do you want to accomplish since we've outlined just mm-hmm. now a couple of very serious threats in the asia region well asia society is a very unique outfit it's not government it's not the united nations it's a it's a non-profit non-governmental organization with a unique set of tools it's not just policy um you know dialogue platform but also very strong traditionally cultural and education exchange and uh, cultural and arts exchange and education. Christian, you were there when the New York Philharmonic visited North Korea sponsored by Asia Society. That was ages ago. I'm not sure we could pull off something like that again th- in these days, but th- that's the uniqueness of of uh, Asia Society. We have these tools. Uh I believe we are a trusted partner from many key players. and and we can work both openly but also under the radar well you mentioned that uh, philharmonic musical interlude there with that musical diplomacy 
and I would be very, very happy to keep uh, mm -hmm. reporting if ever such a bridge could be, you know, created again. I'd be very happy to do that. You have a huge challenge on your hands. Foreign Minister Kang Kyung-hwa, thank you so much for being with us.